It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out, episode 356. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hi. Hi. I'm going to throw that at the damn timer. <laughs> I was going to just pretend and let it get edited out, but then I'm like, oh, they'll see on the video. <laughs> well, none if they edit it out, they Me would edit that like, out. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Why won't you work? Curse you, remote. <laughs> the, the remote that for the timer that won't turn on the timer but will turn on the television but now the regular remote won't turn on the television and do you guys have this problem do your do your like tvs that are like random kind of off brands like ours is a toshiba i don't know how good of a tv that is it's old but it's an amazon amazon tv that's right well now it has ads as you turn it on like like the second you turn it on yeah. it's giving you ads it's crazy oh it's so frustrating like you yeah like it, you turn it on and it makes you watch all these ads and like it doesn't want to do anything until you've watched these ads thank god it doesn't do that on our television in the living room i i would be like i don't i don't want it anymore so get it out of here so i'm bracing everyone that this is what the future looks like for real so, um uh, so Amazon's doing that on all their TVs. Roku just patented something where it can take over your HDMI inputs. So when you plug in your your Roku into your HDMI, it will take it over and make you watch ads before you access anything on your Roku. That is in your future. And if you have a Vizio, <laughs> guess what? Walmart just bought Vizio, so they can do the same thing. So what you're going to start seeing, I think, is you're going to see TV prices come down, but they're going to shove ads down your throat. So yes, you'll be able to get a 65-inch TV for like 400 bucks, but you're going to have to watch ads every time you turn it on. Oh. Yeah, so it's like so So pay the premium to not have ads. Right. So if <laughs> if you If that's important to you. Yeah, so it's like if you have like a Samsung, assuming Samsung doesn't broker a deal like that, but if you have a Samsung, then you know, you will pay more for it, but you won't have to watch ads every time you turn it on. Whack a doodle. Yeah. And the thing is is like right now it's like one ad, two ads, but there's no there's no limit. There's no limit. It's guaranteed it's going to stay that. I mean, they could make it six ads, eight ads, and you're captive. <laughs> who, like, who knew that streaming television would change that? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's It actually makes perfect sense how we got here, but still, yeah. not a fan. It's like every time the public finds an end run around ads. They find a way to find you. They get more aggressive about shoving them down your throat. They do. So They do. It's, Yeah. It's it is very frustrating, especially when it when they're popping up on like it feels invasive. Like when I'm when I'm watching a show and there's an ad like that's that's, that's acceptable. That's been the business model for for programming mm-hmm. for, you know, almost 100 years at the, this point. So you're just used to it and yeah. you know that it's coming and you don't think anything of it, really. But when it's like, hey, we know you bought this piece of equipment and you think you own it. But guess what? You don't. It's still ours fuck you watch this commercial yeah like yeah that's enraging it to is me. it that's is that's enraging it's it's a pre-roll like they have on a podcast but right. but but that's not that's not the standard for television shows so right or for t- turning your tv on and i mean and you can hit skip right right like right. you can hit skip on the podcast yeah like you can't hit they're not letting you hit you skip can't, on the tv like, yeah whenever you turn it on and this happens like let me be clear you can't do anything else to the television like it will not respond yeah. to anything yeah you have to watch the commercials you know the irony is it was probably going to happen people are going to stop turning off their televisions oh just leave it on just leave it on oh now we'll have an energy crisis right <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one thing <laughs> unintended consequence. Yes. All right, we should talk about the show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. So bef- before we do, let's uh, let's do our first bingo call out. All right. I'm not even gonna try. Just 
I'm just going to get right in there. Drum roll noise. <laughs> yeah, your first bingo call out is Charlotte Weidenbach. End drum roll noise. <laughs> Ta-da. That works. Yes. So um, uh, what, pray tell, do you have on the show this week? Well, first of all, um, we have our interview with Stephania Lewis this week that we are going to be doing. Awesome. We also are going to be talking about what is going on with these Peloton referral codes. Uh, Pel- or, or lack thereof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peloton has been nominated for two Webby Awards. We're going to talk about a recap for the Berlin Half. What's going on at PSL. Uh, Dr. Jen stops by. We talk about the difference between vegan and plant-based. Uh, we also have several... Several instructor updates, lots of big stuff going on, the latest artist series. We have uh, a couple of different past guest updates, competitor news, and uh, and more, of course. Awesome. Oh, more is my favorite. Yeah, yes. me too. So uh, <laughs> before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. That's super helpful. You can also uh, find us on Facebook at Facebook. Facebook.com slash real spoilers like the page join the group uh, the group is I haven't explained this for a while the group is a little bit easier for you guys to yeah, start conversation that's true. So, uh, if you post on a page like it, it just goes into a black hole nobody. we're the only ones that ever see it and even then half the time we don't see it it's so, like Facebook has gotten weird and very weird and so but the group is a little bit better for that so it's it's like a little nicer than the OPP a lot okay it's a lot it's nicer a than lot the nicer because if people get rude in the group you'll kick them out I will kick them out you will kick that you are like no name calling get out of here yes take it to the OPP yes <laughs> but um uh so that's kind of the difference between the page and the group so come on over and we'd, we'd love to have you you can also uh watch these episodes on youtube at youtube.com slash the clip out uh we have a patreon patreon.com slash the clip out where for five bucks a month you get all sorts of bonus content and like ad free episodes and you get a bonus episode weekly which is 20 25 minutes every week of just stuff we didn't have time to put into this this episode sometimes we tell little interesting stories about peloton of <laughs> days gone by yes or just weird stories of things that happened to us well a lot of times we'll share over there um and also uh the patreon for five bucks it just covers a lot of the costs like the microphones and the computers and the, the all the web hosting yeah, and all it, that stuff surprisingly we've been doing this for how many years now uh seven seven and going and on seven and uh, going on eight years yeah. in may whoa is, is that the math? We started in 2017. What's the math on that? I'm a communication. We tar- started in 2016, didn't we? No, you got your bike, bike in, 2016. in 2016. See, it's been so long, I yeah. can't even do the math anymore. Yes. Yes. So anyway, point is, things have had to be replaced a few times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so if you've got it, that's great. And if not, listening's great too. Yeah. So, and you um, can always share articles, share the episode, all of that's super helpful. Very much so, and greatly appreciate it. So uh, anyway, there's all that. Let's, uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Peloton in the news. Where did you go? Referral codes. <laughs> yeah. So um, a couple of people reached out to me this week saying like, hey, are you seeing that there's no referral codes? Well, no, I'm not because mine was taken a long, long yes, time ago. They, they seized yours. Years ago. Years and years ago. But um, so I started asking around and apparently like it's just gone. Now all you see is this like what you see in this image. If you're watching YouTube, you see basically like, hey, you can give a guest pass to somebody for 60 days. That's it. There is no more referral code. So the question then is, is this kind of like paused while they are doing their little guide giveaway when you buy equipment or not? And, And here's the really interesting thing. I reached out to Peloton and asked the question, is this temporary no response crickets crickets not even like we'll get back to you they just never responded they literally it showed up in the mail this morning sent her a box of crickets they did they sent me back a box of crickets and they were like here's some breakfast right like have some cricket powder psny sent her a (laughs) cricket widget is that what they're called i don't know i don't know (laughs) <laughs> they, what is a cricket widget? It's like what they use to hit the crickets with. Oh, we were. Yeah. So um, all the listeners in the uck are like, Jesus Christ. 
This bloke knows nothing. <laughs> this bloke. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, Uck listeners, I don't know anything about American sports either. It's true. I mean, I pick up some through osmosis because I live here. Yeah. But like every once in a while, like things seep through because they were in a movie. Right. Yeah. You yes. Do, you do know random weird things about sports because of movies. That's where it seeps through. Yeah. Is if if it's a plot point in a movie, suddenly I'll be like, oh, well, here's the infield fly roll. Yeah. And I'll be like, what? And I'm like, I don't know. It was in like Bad News Bears go to Japan or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. When you explained <laughs> football to me, I was like, what is happening right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I watched The Longest Yard with Burt Reynolds, the good one, not the Adam Sandler one. But like, yeah, so I, I understand football because of North Dallas 40 and The Longest Yard. That's how that works. Well, uh, at any rate, uh, that is interesting that Peloton didn't respond. I, yes. I sent an email, no response. So we're not really sure quite how to take that. Here's my theory. Oh, a theory. I've got a theory. I don't think this ties into the guide thing at all. Okay. I think this is a real theory. I believe you. You look you look at me like you think I'm gearing up to tell you a joke. I mean, because nine times out of ten you are, but, even when you say you're not. But this is not a joke. It will end with laugh track. <laughs> I don't need a laugh track. I know. I get that re- was hurtful. I get real laughs. Thank you very much. You actually do. That's I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. That, that's the sort of thing that will send us to marriage counseling. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think what this ties into is the free tier going away because they're pushing you to the guest pass. So you can't come in and get a free trial period of any real substance right but if you know somebody you can get a guest pass for 60 days but why can't why don't you still get money for referring to buy a bike because they don't want to give you money but i but but i don't yeah i don't like that i yeah i mean i think (laughs) but you weren't getting get in anywhere nah it's been years you you Um, did too many and they seized it they did uh but But I yeah, I think they're trying to make it where like, oh, what members have access to is you can give people two months of a free Peloton trial instead of just people who drift into the website and get seven days. That's what I think. Well, you could be right. I don't know. But uh, I just thought it was very interesting, regardless of whether or not you're right or it's about the guide. I just think it's interesting that they just like did it. And like the weird thing is, is I'm not seeing it everywhere. Like I would think that I would be hearing more about this, like more chatter from people. Like, yeah. why can't I? You know, it's just a couple people that asked. Yeah. So, well, it's probably one of those things where, first off, people aren't probably pounding through referrals the way they were five or six years ago. Facts. So, and I'm sure if you have a referral code, it still works. They're just not like. It, like if credit right, is what oh, I mean to oh, say. Oh. If you have referral credit, it's still going to function. Yes. So it's probably people are kind of slowly like, oh, I have a friend that wants it. Hang on, let me get my referral. Or they're giving them the referral code. They go to the website to make the purchase. There's no place to enter the referral code. And they're just like, well, whatever. And they move the, on. That's the weird thing. You literally cannot find your referral code. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There is no referral code. That makes me think it went away. That's what that's why I think that. Because in the past, you could you had both. You had sixty days that you could give a guest pass right, right. and you had your referral code. Referral code's gone. But the other weird thing is that when you buy a bike or something, the box is still there. So like you could still put a code in there. Right. If they were gonna turn it off temporarily, wouldn't they wouldn't that be easier? Than to to take everyone's referral codes away, yeah. So that's why I think it's or just forever. <laughs> or you could have it like you just can't stack, right? If it's about the guide, it's like well, you can get the free guide or you can use the referral. They've code. done that before. Like, I mean, I've had lots of websites do that to me. Like you, oh, you can't stack these coupons, or you can't get your advantage American Advantage miles and use your Capital One. Having, code. having said that, maybe it's just everybody I've checked with no longer has one. Like, maybe it's not across the board. I don't know. That just seems weird, But too. also weird that Peloton never responded then. Very. So, I don't yeah. know. I'm curious. Let us know, people. If yes. you have your referral codes and this all sounds like fake news, let us know. <laughs> I'm very curious. Let's do a poll. Peloton was nominated for not one, but two Webby Awards. Yes, they were.
So when I first heard this, when I first saw this, uh, because one of the tipsters posted, I think it was Jen Kern. Uh um, I was like, I instantly thought it was Susie Chan documentary because Uh, it was the first one that was like Peloton Studios presents, you know, and I was like, oh, here we go with the, the awards. Right. So what was it? It was the Shanta May video where they had like because she had had a disability and like she kept pushing and she was able to because like when she first started, she could barely like move right. the pedals. And then as she kept working through, she kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger and moving on the treadmill. And um, and so she she was able to move past that. And that was what they won the Webby for. Oh, nice. It, it's awesome. I was actually a lot happier about that. Like, uh, you know, I love my Susie Chan. So that is not about Susie. I am aware. I just thought that like it was kind of obvious and it felt like they whenever I heard that, I was just like, oh, did they only do this because they were trying to get a Webby? Like it felt it felt very scripted. It right. felt very like this. We're doing this for a very specific reason. But the Shanta May thing was just a really, really amazing, inspiring story that they shared. And I'm much happier about that. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Not that they care. <laughs> also, uh, the other one uh, that was interesting, I didn't. I didn't even know you could win a Webby Award for something like this. Mm-hmm. But like their little thing with TikTok Fitness. Yeah. They got a Webby nomination for that. Oh. Right. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. okay so so but peloton needs your help if you want to see them win you got to go vote for them so if that's important to you go do that sure it's very important to me is it that peloton wins a webby you know though back I'm, in 2018 i would have been voting every day that's true. i would have been all over it i i just I just i don't know i kind of don't care <laughs> well I'm, I'm a little worn out yeah well i out. mean we do talk about it Day in, day out. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I do. All <laughs> right. Peloton was out in force at the Berlin Half Marathon, or if you were German, the Berlin Half Berberthon. What do they call it? They had a different name. They do have a different it's in name. German. I thought it was interesting that in German, Half Marathon, however you say it, is all one word. It is interesting. Where in English, it's two, it's Half Marathon, but in German, it's like a portmanteau they've merged them yeah or we unmerge them one of the two i don't know who did it first i don't know yeah maybe it has something to do with like miles versus kilometers i wonder no because they should be the same length yes but a half marathon is 13.2 right and if you look at the kilometers it i'm just saying it's yeah. different anyway though um Yes, this is another one that they have uh, partnered with. We talked about this a little bit last week as they were gearing up for it. And uh, several of the instructors were there. They showed in this reel, they kind of did a recap of it. Uh, it looked like people were having a lot of fun. They had a booth like they had at the New York Roadrunners. Um, the instructors like had shakeout classes and stretch classes and all kinds of things. They also had several other I assume famous German runners that were part of it that were also featured and showing, you know, helping teach the classes and things like that. Um, It looked like people had a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and speaking of shakeout runs. Yeah. PSL is having a shakeout run on April 16th. They are. And if you live in the area or visiting the area, you can sign up and go join. But they start it right there at uh, the studio location and then they do a little covent gardens yes and then they do a little five mile loop or 5k excuse me three mile loop it's like five miles (laughs) 3.2 miles uh they do a little loop and then uh they come back and uh, the instructors have been showing up to these and it's been like very heavily um attended by the community so looks like people have been having a lot of fun for these so that's good i feel like especially talking about these back to back the Berlin half marathon and then the shakeout run in London. I feel like they're getting a lot more aggressive about doing grassroots level engagement activities in the international markets. I I think that you are right. And I think that makes sense. I also find it interesting that at least to me, it feels like they're doing more with the running community in Europe than Mm -hmm. they're doing here. Um, Not that Peloton doesn't do stuff with the running community, but it's not like it's not like there's a 5K happening every month at the Peloton New York studio. Um, And this has been happening for a few months at the London studio. And I don't know why that is. Like, why are they focusing more on the tread in Europe than they are focusing or running classes than they are 
the bike. I find that interesting because the bike gets hit hard here, really yeah. hard. Yeah, it is interesting. I think overall there's there's been an a, I won't say shift, but the amount of running focus is leveling up. I think it is definitely I leveling up. Feel like they think their growth potential is in treadmills. I mean, it should be. There's yeah. only so many bikes you can sell, so that makes sense to me. Yeah. Also. I mean, look, I, I know that this is probably not going to be a super popular opinion, but I think that there you don't are like Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that there are a lot of bike instructors that have had a lot of attention for a really long time. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea to spread that around. Yeah. And it seems like the tread would be an obvious focus, as is strength, as is rowing. Um and it makes sense that you would probably do tread first since tread was around before anything else. Right. It was bike, then tread, then strength, then row. And you have a more expensive piece of equipment to sell them from tread versus strength. Also true. Right. Yeah. Strength, you're going to sell them what? A guide and a couple barbells? Yeah. Or dumbbells? It, you know, where, no, let's sell them a four to $6,000 piece of equipment. Very good point. Who's suing Peloton now? Hey, remember that Bike Plus uh, trademark lawsuit that went away? Yeah. It unwent away. Yep. It's like The Walking Dead, but for lawsuits. Right? It reminded me of zombie debt. Yeah. Is zombie court cases. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, okay, so just to kind of reset for people who may not know this whole story, since you guys don't necessarily all follow it as carefully <laughs> as we do. But um, this goes what you have us for. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to. The Bike Plus had been challenged as a trademark by World Champ LLC. And they said, hey, we came up with Bike Plus first. And so every time Peloton uses that, they should like give us a nickel. Yeah. More than that, I'm sure. Well, seven cents. So then Peloton, of course, had an argument against that. And then the court ultimately ruled that, no, you don't get to do that because it's been years since like, you marketed. Yeah, this. They were like, your your usage is weak. I think they literally they said use weak. the word weak. And they, because, yeah, they they like used Bike Plus like five or six years ago in something or other. And then the company's practically defunct and hasn't used it in years and and then they're like you're damaging our our ability to use this and they were like no <laughs> this is what they were they and the were court like, was just like no that's dumb they, they go were. away and then they said well we don't want to go away that's exactly what they said in that exact but they tone. said it in like latin or something because they're <laughs> lawyers but but uh but i just think it's like it's it's just like it's I like it's funny because it's not happening to us. But uh, but like the when the judge is like, so I'm ruling from the bench and I'm saying this in fancy terms, but that's a really shitty argument. And you're dumb for having said it. Good day to you, sir. And then their appeal is like, no, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> your honor in Latin. I'm rubber, you're glue. <laughs> and so, so, like, why would, what would make you think that would work? I don't know, <laughs> but, so it was, it the first time it went through, it was in the U.S. District Court. Wait, for is the, this company running for president? Is that what's going on? <laughs> do they, they just, they just want to do, they just want to delay this judgment until after the election. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, the first time that this was discussed, it was in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Columbia. And now it is going through the California Federal Court. So that's where they uh. have placed their appeal. So we shall uh. see. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, this is uh, legal precedent uh, from the case of uh, mom said no versus I'll go ask dad. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I think it's pretty standard. I think this is pretty standard, though. Like, this is what they do. It's like, sure. Let's. Might as well try. Let's try it over here. Yeah. What about you? It's like the tender equivalent of getting turned down and being like, your sister seeing anybody (laughs) (laughs) that's true so uh we will we will keep an eye on it see what happens and coming up after this we are going to talk to dr jen she's going to explain because i asked Mm -hmm. this is my fault i asked what's the difference between vegan and plant-based 
Yes, you did. And, and you asked off air. And it, she was like, and she's like, let's record it. Doing another segment. <laughs> so it's coming up after this. Getting this psychological edge with Dr. Joining Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen or her long-running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show. She's written four best-selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. So I guess we should last. So we, this is something I asked off the air after last week's question, and uh, I had accidentally asked a good question. <laughs> Every once in a while, and, <laughs> you ask lots of good questions. And it's, it's rare for someone to say we should actually record this. <laughs> Normally, it's like, can we take that out? The That's thing, true. We do have a lot of take he those said out. about the that was weird. Can we make that go away? There's a lot of that. Um, but uh, so we had a question about plant-based diets and I asked the question, is plant-based the same as vegan? Is it just a new fancy way to say vegan or is it mean something slightly different is like you're progressing towards that but like if you occasionally have fish no one's going to show up on your door <laughs> and arrest you no one's going to show up either way <laughs> vegan police. yes the yes. vegan police is very active all over this country they knock at your door and if they see you eating fish or an animal they come and get you yes. um, it, it, it is a great question and, and I, I'm gonna answer all of that and more. Um, and as you mentioned before, I am certified in plant-based nutrition in addition to being a licensed therapist. And I'm a vegan of 14 years and a vegetarian of since I was 10 years old. So many decades, more decades than I'd like to admit. <laughs> so typically when we talk about vegan versus plant-based, usually what we're talking about is what, what's called whole foods plant-based. The difference between vegan and whole foods plant-based is that vegan is you are not eating meat and you're not eating anything that comes from an animal with a heartbeat. So you're not eating dairy, you're not having milk, you're not having eggs, you're not having all these other things. And typically also being a vegan extends to other things oftentimes, but not always. Like, for example, I don't wear leather. Right. I don't wear leather shoes. I don't wear leather coats. I don't I don't buy wool. I don't I don't buy anything that comes from an animal or where an animal obviously no fur um, where an animal was harmed in order to make that thing. And then also a lot of vegans won't uh, go to any kind of entertainment that involves an animal like no like rodeos, circuses, yeah, no yeah. rodeos, like no, that kind of no circuses, no zoos, that kind of stuff. Like I don't do that because the belief behind kind of someone who's truly vegan is that animals are not for entertainment or for our consumption. So there's kind of a you can be vegan and not make those choices about wearing animals or animals for entertainment. But a lot of the time, once you kind of start down that path, you just look at animals very differently. So it, it oftentimes occurs, but not for everyone. Being whole foods plant based means that you are getting the bulk of your nutrition, if not all of it, from holistic foods. So you're not eating a lot of or any processed food. So you you are having a lot of fruits and vegetables and nuts and grains and legumes and all. And when I say not processed foods, I'm like most people I know have. Well, there's also a, a, an oil free group of vegans, especially those that follow like Dean Ornish, who believes in like 10 percent fat. And usually those are people who are focused on reducing heart disease and may have heart disease in their family or in their history. But when we're talking about whole foods, plant based, those those that group of people tend to for minimally processed food. They eat very nutritious, high density when it comes to nutrition and a lot of fruits and vegetables and foods in their natural kind of sorts. And they're not necessarily raw, by the way. Raw is a whole other situation. <laughs> and there are a lot of raw vegans who believe that you don't heat your food past a certain point. I forget what the degree is. It's like 118 or something. I don't remember what the number is. The reason for that is that the belief is that foods have their most nutrition when they are not cooked 
Now, understand when you say to someone, oh, are you vegan? It doesn't mean that they're necessarily whole foods, plant based or raw or anything else in between. So there are a lot of different kind of sub camps within the vegan community. Yeah. Great answer. Very, that's, very detailed. That's a lot to unpack. It is. It is. And and then you have your pescatarians and vegetarian, which is different. And yes. I, there's another one that's different. Methodists. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I started out like I was I was born a meat eater into a meat eating family. I saw a documentary when I was 10 years old that showed the slaughterhouses. And after I saw that, I went into the kitchen. My mom was like, do you want a hamburger? And I was like. I don't think I can eat that after what I saw. And she's like, hot dog. I was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. And I was like, I think that I don't want to eat meat anymore. And fortunately for me, my mom was super supportive and she was like, okay. But she was worried about me not getting enough protein. And she said, why don't you eat fish? Because what she said was fish have a low nervous system. They don't know they're being killed. (laughs) So I was like, okay i mean it was 10 i didn't do a lot of research there was no internet then so i went with it so i was pescatarian for many decades and then i kind of started to at some point do a little research and realize like actually fish do you know they're being killed it's not a positive experience for them um and decided to cut that out as well then i saw kathy freston on tv years later talking about the suffering on your plate and kind of what does it mean to eat different foods and even everything from kind of the workers who are involved in the slaughterhouses or the fields or are exposed to pesticides to the animals that are being tortured and killed or in factory farms or harmed. So it really got me thinking and when I learned about, she talks about how kind of uh, that when you look at the dairy industry, that milk is what vegans call liquid meat. And that is that the dairy cow is in these horrible conditions in a little and she can't move. She's impregnated in order to keep her producing milk. And then she has a baby. If it's a girl baby, she gets put in a pen and then she's treated the way the mom was and trapped in a cage for her whole life. And if it's a boy, he gets put in a, he's separated from his mom, put in a cage so he can't move. And then he's slaughtered after he's a couple months old in order to make a veal. So that having milk contributes to that system, not to mention that a lot of studies show that milk is highly correlated to osteoporosis, believe it or not, and cancer. So when I learned about that, and then when I saw the factory farms where chickens are laying eggs and understood that when they say that something is cage-free, that it means that they open up the cage for an undetermined amount of time, I was like, you know what? I don't want to contribute to that kind of pain and suffering. So for me, it was the right choice to stop doing that. When I first became vegan, I said, you know, I'm going to try this. I, as you know, I don't believe in deprivation. And I was like, how do I kind of find that balance of, I don't want to be deprived and I also don't want to hurt animals. And so I started off saying like, okay, if I feel like this is not, working for me, I'm going to maybe once a week or when I feel like it, have a piece of regular cheesecake or something else. Then I read a book called The Ethics of Eating. And in the book, they talked about if you believe that robbing a bank is wrong, you don't say to yourself, well, every Thursday I'll let myself rob a bank because I feel like robbing a bank. And that for me, like when I read that, that really resonated with me. And so after I read that, I was like, yeah, I don't think I can do that. But the great news is that there are so many incredible substitutes that like there is nothing that I miss. Even like there was I years ago, I had dinner with a friend of mine who worked at he was at the Humane. Center. Like the one thing I haven't found a replacement for is cake. And he was like, I know the best cheesecake. And he literally sent me a cheesecake from a place called Vegan Treats on the East Coast. It was a brownie cheesecake that was one of the greatest cheesecakes I've ever (laughs) eaten in my life. So the point is being that you can find substitutes so much that you don't have to feel deprived. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all that additional information. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, where can people find you? On all social media at Dr. Jen Mann, two ends on Jen, two ends on Mann. Thank you. Thank you. Instructors in the news. Christian Vandeveld is back on the schedule. He is. This has been 
a long time a in the making. A long time. I, I thought it was really funny. I think the funniest thing I saw was when Jen Cotter posted this weekend about it. And she said, you can stop with the emails. He's <laughs> back. <laughs> I was like, they're just going to ask about something else. I now. know. I was just thinking, <laughs> dear God, don't tell them that or they're going to start emailing you about Daniel McKenna again. <laughs> I'm sure they never stop. For the love of Christ, <laughs> Jen Cotter, think it through. Think it through, woman. You don't want to do that. <laughs> don't rile them up. Yes. Uh, but They don't uh, even do St. Patrick's Day rides anymore. <laughs> it's just not worth the risk. <laughs> they actually do. We had I a know. whole thing about it. I, I don't um, listen. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, but Christian Van, Van Develde is back. Uh, so last week in uh, Matt's 90-minute Power Zone class, he had Christian in the class and uh, as part of the endurance ride he kind of like interviewed him while they rode yeah and um, that was pretty cool people were very excited about that and then he was back on the schedule the next day um, or I think that yeah and then he was going to be on for like Thursday so um, we'll get to it later in the TCO top five but let's just say both of those rides were very popular this week okay <laughs> Rebecca Kennedy has set her wedding date. We are looking at a September wedding for Andy and RK. Oh, that's when my parents got married in September. Really? Yeah. Aww. They got married on my birthday. That's really cute. I mean, I wasn't born yet, but it ended up being my birthday. That's cute. Yeah. Celebrate everything all at once. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Who celebrates an anniversary and a kid's birthday at the I same time? I was joking. <laughs> you were like, uh. I'm like, what? Is I'm that? trying not to make it sound like you're a dumb, but that's dumb. <laughs> like, is that a thing? No. If it is, they never did it. <laughs> well, that's good because you were a kid and you should get to celebrate your birthday. Also, my my I don't think my dad was there when I was born. What? They. Uh, what the hell was that about? <laughs> there was... The a pool table was getting delivered to the house. Oh my god! Hey, it was a one piece slate. You ever try and put a one piece slate pool table in a basement? You it find, ain't easy. You find somebody else. Well, to I take. I was early. Yeah. And so I I, and? I think that they weren't banking on that, and the pool table was getting delivered. And what are you going to do? Plus, I was born in 1970. Like men weren't in there telling women to push and yeah, stuff back that's then. True. It was old timey. It was like I Love Lucy. He's in the waiting room with cigars or something. Plus, I was kid number two. <laughs> I was like the novelty had worn off. It's true. You know, yeah. the novelty of me wears off real quick <laughs> for everyone but you <laughs> <laughs> and even some days it depends on the day <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah so he was there it's funny because it was we were always able to say like how long have we had the pool table i can tell you exactly how long we've had the pool table <laughs> because i have emotional trauma because <laughs> your dad wasn't when in i the found out room. my father wasn't there when i was born so i was like that's pretty funny so i was like oh this is often well, awful Back to Rebecca and Andy. Oh, Congratulations on setting your wedding date. Now yes. the, the wedding planning shall begin. So hopefully it's on September 24th. That would be great. That would be wonderful. It would. See if they're going to get a pool table delivered. <laughs> In like nine years. Yes. Yeah. So Alex Kurwowski did not make the Olympic rowing team. He did not. But boy, he put forth a good effort and uh, he went out for it two different times. Like they had two different kinds of qualifying events. They probably okay. had more than that. I think it's, yeah, I think it's like rowing on the right side versus rowing on the left side. So you do them twice. No. That's how that, I know a lot about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Valerie Bertinelli, audience member. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. This story is hysterical, but we're not going to bog you down with it here. So we're going we're gonna <laughs> to tell it on the Patreon this week. But... It, we went to see uh, Valerie Bertinelli. We got to meet her briefly, and because uh, um, she was in St. Louis promoting her new cookbook called Indulge. Indulge. Uh, it's a book, a cookbook entirely of Met Pro unapproved recipes, <laughs> and uh, there was an epic, epic mansplaining incident i mean it, it was, was epic it was jaw-dropping like it, it made me speechless i mean as a man i was nervous about <laughs> being in the room there was only like three of us there but i was just like 
oh shit <laughs> what have you done they're, man <laughs> there's there's going to be an estrogen uprising and they're going to lynch the men in this room and she I, handled it so well though i'm not even gonna blame them i'm gonna be <laughs> while they're beating me to death with their purses i'm gonna be like i am innocent but like i get it i get it <laughs> So we will tell that story on the Patreon. We will. So, we will. Um, where were we at? Alex Karoski. Oh, yeah. He uh, he was going for the Olympic team and you were explaining oh, yes, to me. Oh, yes. Right rowing versus left rowing. <laughs> yes. and I think they use uh, cricket widgets. <laughs> well, there were two or three. That's probably why I lost to use a cricket widget. <laughs> <laughs> there were at least two different events that he did to try to qualify for it. And you had to like make a certain, like you had to win a certain round to make it to the next round. I don't have Nikki here explaining, so. So we're just yeah. going to have to go with my terrible explanations. And um, he didn't make it, but um, we're, we're all hopeful that maybe next time. I love when these instructors try things like this because yeah. they're always telling us to go after our dreams and yeah. like try for big things. And like they're doing, they're putting their money where their mouth is. What's cooler than that? Yeah. I think it's also nice to see that like not everybody gets it. Yeah, right? like it's like, not a participation kind of thing, right? Like, and you have and to that's be, okay, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, yeah. I know, I'm sure it sucks for him, and of he course. doesn't want to. Ha He's like, well, I'm glad you feel good about it, but I don't. <laughs> but, but I think it's nice, like, or like when you see an instructor that's like, you know what, it doesn't make sense for me to do this marathon right now, and I'm not. Yeah, and that, and like, we're gonna get to one of those later. Yeah, and like that's okay. Mm -hmm. And so I think, even though I'm sure it's heartbreaking for him, I think in big picture, it's good to see that like they're also they're not superheroes right so they're gonna win some they're gonna lose some because that's what life is same as it is for everybody absolutely absolutely yeah well we're sorry that alex didn't make it but we're really proud of him for for trying absolutely. and for inspiring all of us and he got very very far in the process absolutely like to, to even get to that point he got to the finals you are a next level rower absolutely olivia amato's dog tore her ACL. Yes. I didn't know dogs had ACLs. I didn't either. But the dog, Rue, it was Rue because Olivia has two. Oh. It was Rue and Rue had... Of course, had, I knew that, but I'm glad you explained for the listeners. Of course. Yes. Well, Rue had to have surgery. Rue is home resting with Olivia. And uh, she's... Olivia is feeling much better now that Rue has had her surgery and like doing better. Cause it was a very scary like 24 hours. Yeah. Like, very scary. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. And... Uh, her dog, though, did have to drop out of the the New York, <laughs> New York half, City Marathon. Half pup marathon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, uh, John Hosking did. And uh, we will talk about that over in the bonus episode. Yes. I don't think that's on this list. No, it's in the bonus. So shh, don't tell people. Well, I'm trying. They can't find out <laughs> unless they're Patreon subscribers. Whoops. You're ruining the business model. Sorry. <laughs> Coming up after this, we're going to talk about the latest artist series. It actually features someone I've heard of and seen in concert multiple times. Same. So stick around. Peloton Artist Collaboration. I, I, I was just thinking that I have on my Big Sur sweater today. Right. And um, I just saw that it came through on Instagram that because part of the course fell into the ocean. Right. They are still having the Big Sur Marathon, but they now had, it's an obstacle course. It's not an obstacle <laughs> course, but they had to completely reroute it. So now instead of it being like a point A to point B, now it's an out and back from Carmel. Oh. And they had to completely redo everything. Oh. Yeah. I would be so sad and to not, not get to do the whole thing. Yeah. Does it take, it's so gorgeous. Does it get rid of the big giant hill? Um, I honestly, I don't know because um, I think it might because I think it's on the other side of that big hill because gotcha. I think it's like just before the bridge where it, it broke. Yeah. And so... I don't know that, though, because I am the worst at geography and yeah. getting lost. So I don't know. Gotcha. But but I was like thinking about how devastated I would have been last year. Yeah. If I got there and couldn't do it. 
Like I would have been like, are you kidding me? They're like, you're going to do the lesser version. Yeah. I'd be like, Which it doesn't I'm sure count. it's still great. No, and it's of course it does. But, of course. But it would feel like you're not getting the real thing. Because last year's meant so much to me with having to train for it and yeah. like the, the accident and everything. It would have been really hard to accept that. It's not, like seeing Van Halen with Gary Sharon. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it counts. It doesn't really feel like It's just that that was such a momentous occasion to be able to do. I wanted to be able to do the whole thing. So I I feel really bad for people that that they're in that situation this year. You know, we just played an artist series sweeper though, right? Oh, sorry. (laughs) We were talking about some artists. We just chat. Yeah. (laughs) We leave it in. So so, uh, the latest artist series features Aerosmith. Yes. So... I wrote this article, which I very rarely do, but Nikki is very busy this week. So I had to write this article. And, and when you I say love the Aerosmith, I do love the Aerosmith. So I gave a little history in there about Steven Tyler's larynx injury mm-hmm. and uh, that they had canceled last year's farewell tour. That we had tickets for. We did. And then um, I figured I was I was thinking since they were kicking off this artist series yep. that meant they were about to announce the new concert yeah. for this year and they did today they, they did so yeah our date just got rescheduled we did not refund our tickets no and i'm so excited so yeah Yay. it's been a long time since i've seen aerosmith it has for me too boy i think it was back in the early 2000s last time i saw them because yeah. i saw them like three times in a row when they came yeah. through and i was like okay i got it and i saw them once in the 80s mm-hmm. on the per- on the i saw them on the permanent vacation tour Ugh. with Dokken. that would have been amazing and then they came back like nine months later and my buddy was like do you want to go see him again and i was like i just saw him and i'm like i don't even know who this opening act is and it was Guns N' Roses. So, but you know what? I wouldn't have known any of the songs yet. So like, it, like it's monotonous to listen to a band. You don't know any of their songs. It is. Yet. So, but, um, I but saw it, them on the Eat the Rich. That's when I saw them the first time. Gotcha. 96. Yeah. But uh, was that Pump? It was Eat the Rich. It, that wasn't the name of the album though, right? I that thought was it was. That was the name of a song. Maybe they named a tour of that. Oh, I don't know what they named the tour. Yeah. That was just the name of the album. Because that's the one that had like crazy. I think that's Pump. Is it? Yeah. Oh. It's but, the one with the cow on it. Yeah. But it was so funny story is uh, uh, the first time I went to see Aerosmith, I was hanging out with this buddy of mine, Steve Brown. I would have been like 16 and he was older than me. He was like 21. Right. And so and I was so we would go see all the rock concerts together. And and I was like, oh, Aerosmith is coming. Let's go see Aerosmith. And he's like, oh, dude, you don't want to see Aerosmith. They're awful. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, they're awful. Like they're horrible live because they had been right. Like he, it they was were, in that time frame yeah, where they were all drunk or high and like they could, they didn't sound worth shit. And like, they were awful. That would be the early eighties. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and permanent vacation is what put them back on the map. Right. And so that was an amazing album. And I was like, I was like, well, I've never seen them. And he's like, well, if you're going, I'll go. Because that was back when concert tickets were like $12. Right, as know? opposed to 400 Right. And uh, and so we go, and I'm like... Dude. I'm like, what sort of bar have you set for this band? Like, they're amazing. <laughs> and he's like, that is not what they sound like when I saw them two years ago. Because I was like, Jesus Christ, man, you really expect bands to bring the heat. Like, they sound unreal (laughs) so anyway there's an aerosmith artist series yeah i'm really excited about it they have so many hits they do like 50 years plus of hits that you can draw from hope we get a little dream on you know of course you can't yeah but i wonder if they'll play crazy because that's always my favorite yeah and crying oh so many good ones (laughs) past guest update C.J. Albertson got featured uh, very prominently on Strava's website. Yeah, they did a whole article about him. And then uh, they talked about unique coaching tips. And he's got some unique ones. The way he trains is very unique. You remember how he told us how he had like the heat lamps and how he like and he he like goes through a lot of intense training. So he's got some good advice for people. But also he's just an amazing runner and uh, big fans over here. Absolutely. Also past guest, Ellen Hildebrand, queen of the beach read. Yes. Says it on her business card. It does. Uh, her 
book the five star weekend is heading to Peacock. Yes. And they've been working on this for a while, but she announced this week that they had a development team. So it is happening. That is so awesome. exciting. Well, congrats to her. Absolutely. I remember when we interviewed her, we talked about like, would would there be a day? Yeah. You know, and she kind of made it sound like that she was already working on stuff. And this stuff takes a while. It so does. It could have been this. <laughs> my guess is it was and that especially because that was right when you were ha- you were seeing lots of success with things like uh, uh, Big Little Lies. Oh, and yeah, yeah. What, Pretty Fires? Pretty Little Fires. I don't, uh, everywhere. Pretty Things Everywhere. I don't, I, yeah, like... All of those. But you had a lot of those, like, uh, female-driven cast and creative team books being turned into very successful uh, TV miniseries. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Congrats to Ellen. Absolutely. Checking out the competition. American Home Fitness has filed for bankruptcy. They did. Yeah. So who are they? Well, uh, they sell a bunch of different brands like Echelon, Inspire, Precore, Powerplate, Stairmaster, Octane, and Hyper Ice. Um, and they have brick and mortar retail locations. They also have online uh, sales. And on April 2nd, they you entered into um, U.S. bankruptcy court. And they estimated their assets at the time between one million and ten million, and that their liabilities were between a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand. What's up with the estimates? Like, I would think that you would have to be a little more exact. I, and that's why they're going bankrupt. They don't even know how to do math. <laughs> they're like, um, I got it over here somewhere. I think it's under this pile of nope, nope, nope. That's the newspaper. <laughs> well, so uh, they've been around for quite a while. They said that, you know, before COVID, they had very strong years. During COVID, it was very strong. And then post COVID, it's not been strong. <laughs> They said foot traffic is down significantly in their stores and they still have leases to pay on. So um, why do we tell you about this? We tell you about this because two things. One, I can I have said for a while that I feel like that the fitness industry is going to contract. You're going to see mergers. You're going to see acquisitions. You're going to see bankruptcy. And here we are. And so that uh, that continues to happen. And I think it's especially worth noting that, like, you know, people are not happy with Peloton stock price, which I get. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, none of them are killing it. No. None of them are. No. And so the fact that they, I, I think Peloton out of all of them is the one that has their head above water the most. I, they, I don't they think. They do. And I don't think that gets enough credit. It, it doesn't. And, and like, there's a lot of people, especially people who were all over Peloton back in the day when it was in its glory moment, who are really, really against it now. And it's, it's kind of frustrating to watch because I, I know that they think that because I love Peloton and support Peloton, I'm the one that's not looking at it clearly, but I think they're just a bunch of haters and Mm -hmm. they're not looking at the big picture. Like they want Peloton to fail because they don't like Peloton anymore. Therefore they want them to go away. Um, And one of the cases in point, we're going to talk about this more in the Patreon episode. Uh, There was an article written this week about Peloton not paying all their bills on time. And all I'm going to say here is that when you actually look at the data, it, it actually isn't that accurate. Like, yes, there have been bills not being paid on time, as all companies have. Yeah. But it it's not nearly as bad as they say it is, especially the way that Peloton packages their, their days paid. So I think that people are very quick to look at a headline and make assumptions. Yeah. And I don't think it's as bad as what people think it is. So new content. Let's do our next bingo call out. All right. We got bingo number two is Kendall Tool for this week. Awesome. It is time for the TCO top five where you tell us your favorite classes of the week and then we say them back to you. Uh, Number one, but these are not in order. (laughs) Not in order. Just to be clear. Favorite Peloton Power Zone ride. Well, no surprise here. April 6th, it was the 90-minute Power Zone Endurance Ride with Matt Wilpers. Uh, and Christian Vandeveld was back, as I said earlier, and people were super excited about it. Um, and Kathy said, Kathy Pete said that... Is it Kathy Christ- or Cathay? Oh, maybe it is, is Cathay. I like that. It's like a... Ka- fan- it's like a... It's like Kathy, but fancier. You would like that. How many Cathys have you dated? Five? <laughs> Good God, man. Four or five in a row. It's weird consecutive well like just 
one after the other. <laughs> they didn't look alike. Like it's not like <laughs> they I just was, had the same name. Like I don't feel like any of the women I ever went out with looked this. Like I didn't have a type in that regard where I kept having to date the same person over yes. and over again. But just uh, the same name. But they all had the same name. <laughs> like I don't even know how. Like I guess it's just a quirk of demographics of like it was probably a very popular yes, name. I'm sure that year. It's like if you know if you were dating someone in the fifties, you probably dated four Marys in a row or something. But well, Kathy said or Cathay said. Christian Vandeveld was in studio and Matt interviewed him. It was great to see Christian again and the interview sections were really fun. Many and many readers, this is according to our writer Tina, said that it was a toss up between this and Christian's 45 minute debut for their favorite ride this week. Uh, number two is your favorite Peloton ride. Okay, so this was on April 5th. It was a house ride with Jess King. Sue Fleischman said that this was especially exciting for her because she took it in studio and yes, we are jealous. She got to be there and it was the best of the Jess King experience, which she loved. Jess certainly danced her way through the class. I have not dated any Sues, but I've dated seven Fleischmans. <laughs> okay. They were all related. Were they? Yeah, they were. Oh. <laughs> it was made family reunions very awkward. I bet. Yeah. Uh, number three, your favorite Peloton run. Okay, so the Cardi B run with Marcel Dinkins from March 28th came up over and over again. Diana Volk said the Cardi B run was amazing. The song choices were perfect. It was fully uncensored and with walking breaks, you could really push on the run portion. 11 out of 10. First run, I want to do again. Man, if a Cardi B run or ride was censored. What would be the point? It would just sound like a beep, test of the beep, emergency beep. broadcast system. <laughs> it would. Be like, I think Peloton is sending me a message in Morse code. That's why we have uncensored rides <laughs> and runs. Uh, number four, your favorite Peloton strength class. Okay, so this was a 45 minute full body class with Rebecca Kennedy from February 9th. And let's see here. Kim Harden Battles said that she had that Rebecca put this into her unofficial split and it's a good one. Uh, this was the a four day unofficial split. So that is an awesome workout. So Kim Harden Battles. I have not dated a Kim. I have not dated a Harden. But my first marriage was quite a battle. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know if that counts. That's true. That's uh, true. Number five, your favorite unstackable. Well, it, as I said earlier, it was a it was a toss up, but Christian Vandeveld's return to Peloton wins the unstackable. Uh, Courtney Castle Brickenhoff said this ride gets a rare unstackable from me. I don't usually do power zone, but even not following his advice to just follow his metrics, I was hot and sweaty. He was at 60 plus resistance, 90 cadence for four minutes and that is how some people get those high outputs <laughs> <laughs> and another listener Catherine dolger was appreciative that the class was at a very nice 9 a.m pacific time <laughs> <laughs> jody hallman palamides gave it a chef's kiss it was perfect okay and then uh, i guess let's take a quick look at this week at peloton we have uh, stepping out in tune with john hoskins at the club and first off i would like to say hats off to peloton for resisting the urge to say at the club that's fair yeah the entire the entire series is called at the club okay so they still resisted the urge and yes i yes. i yes. am grateful they did this is a, a 30 minute long run and walk class that's going to be taking place on april 11th so that'll be tomorrow uh springtime serenity with ross's spring meditation yes he's going to be unveiling a spring meditation on the 13th and it's going to as peloton says provide a pocket of tranquility in your hectic <laughs> schedule <laughs> It's a gentle 10-minute session okay. harmonizing the breathwork and fresh themes of rejuvenation and bloom. <laughs> uh, Jen Sherman's My Mixtape. We haven't done these for a while, so they are they are back, and she is going to be doing a ride on the 14th at 10 a.m. Eastern, and it's going to be Mixtape Decades. And finally, Enhanced Running Experience with Focus Flow for Runners. Okay, so because we're in the middle of marathon season, this is the perfect time for these Focus Flows. There's a 15-minute with Mariana and a 10-minute with uh, Dennis, and they're going to be... Um, they are going to be tailored, designed specifically to accompany your run. So whether it's post-run recovery or pre-run focus, they are going to be perfect for you. 
Okay. In case you missed it. We've got a new apparel drop. We do, yeah. And uh, I thought this was worth mentioning because it's another Lululemon collaboration. Right. But. But. Exclusive colors oh. this time. You can't get them anywhere else. Oh, how about that? So Lululemon is not selling them. They might be selling them at Lululemon, but not anywhere else. Like Lululemon partners with other. Right. Right companies and you will only be able to get it peloton and lululemon and very bright yellow and a very beautiful purple okay you yeah. you love the purple i do love the purple <laughs> i do checking in with the peloton community joining us today via the magic of zoom tube is stephania lewis hello How's hi it going? hi well, thanks we, for having me. We're so happy to have you. Yes. And uh, you are our first guinea pig on our, our new recording platform. So thank you so much for bearing with us. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. That was interesting. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will get there. Okay, so I love to kind of start with a little bit of background. How, or should I say, when exactly did you decide Peloton was like what you were going to try? Where were you in life? How did this happen? Um, so I actually, it was the end of 2019, early 2020, and I never worked out, like ever, um, <laughs> leading up into this. And, but I always like struggled with a lot of anxiety. And at that point in life, I had just switched jobs. I had moved to another state, which because of the pandemic ended up not working out. So I came back, uh, but mm. I was moving to another state. So I was just in a place of like, so many things happening and I lost a lot of weight to the point where it was unhealthy and I felt really weak um, and clothes weren't fitting me right. People were asking me like, are you eating? You know, it, and um, I was like, I need to make some kind of change, but I never did well at gyms. Like the reason I never worked out was, or I never really did the gym thing. I just, I didn't like going to gyms. I felt weird working out in front of other people. I was really insecure. Um, also, like slight germophobia, even mm -hmm. though things get wiped down. I was still like, uh. but do they? Um, <laughs> and I, like it just kind of. I mean, you know. And then I also, it's so silly, but it was just the actual like oh, the process of getting up and like going to a gym for sure. I was really like I was lazy. <laughs> um, and so, but I finally reached that point where I was like, I'm really stressed out. I'm physically just weak. I'm not in a good place. I'm like, how, you know, and then I saw the commercial and I'm like, oh, you know, and I think that was like when it was like a whole thing, like the the sort of controversial commercial, um, which was how it caught my attention. But then I was like, you know, this could be an interesting solution to my problem where if I had something at home where I could just do it by myself, but still have like an instructor to kind of guide, because I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? For sure. Um, yeah. But even if I look ridiculous and, and look dumb as I do it, like I'm in the, I'm in my own home. Um, so I brought it up to my husband. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm thinking like this would be like maybe worth trying. Like maybe I could finally start getting into shape. And he was just like, Okay, <laughs> this is so, going to be the biggest waste of money. I was going to ask. So was, um, was that but him? He humored me. Was that him being uh, doubtful of your ability to achieve that, or was that him being like, "I'm not going to say a word and sound like I'm being like, yes, you need to start working out." <laughs> he was just more like, "I think it's great that you want to start working out," and he had been like encouraging me because he works out he rides like he doesn't peloton but he rides outdoors and he does other you know other forms of exercise and he wanted me to join him in that um so he was like i'm glad that you like want to but in his mind he's thinking yeah right, right. Like, <laughs> we're just gonna throw towels on it or something you know what i mean like For it's sure. not gonna work um but he didn't he didn't fight me on it he was like all right let's try it and so I got, like I had to wait like three weeks or something, which at that time, because I got it. And so I got the app beginning of March. So I just hit my like four year hello anniversary. Congrats. Um, well done. <laughs> um, and so I started with like the walks and some of the core workouts and things like that on the app. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, 
I like it. And then the bike came and I gave it, you know, I like figured out and I, my husband does the outdoor riding. So he could show me like, here's how you clip in. <laughs> like he has a road bike, so he knows how to clip in and out and all these things. So he taught me how to clip in and out of the bike and did my first ride. And I was like, oh, like this feels kind of good. <laughs> uh, so, and I was just so determined to, to not be like weak, like literally physically weak anymore. So, you know, it was like, all right, more protein and follow, you know, and actually like start doing the Peloton thing. And I loved it. And then I started posting about it on my like personal <laughs> Instagram and then realized like, oh my gosh, I'm going to turn into one of those people that like posts all this stuff about working out and half my friends are like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I started a fitness account and then like met other people who were also, you know, on the platform. And then that just makes it like all the more fun and like the high five. And that's when like I started like connecting with people and the high fives, which just makes it that much more fun. And I have not missed a blue dot since. Wow. So, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, like, uh, wait, every day, every day you haven't. Wow. Wow. Although to be, I mean, obviously some of those are just like, okay, I did a meditation. Good. You know, like I was resting. worried. I was yeah. like, if you haven't had a rest day in four years, I'm yeah, concerned. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's good. That oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely like have taken breaks from the actual like bike and working out, but I would always get my blue dot with like the meditation or just a stretch. Or when I was working like the yoga anytime, like the five minute like yoga anywheres where I could just do it real quick and move around a little because the app had so many things. So I started getting more and more into it and trying different classes. And so here I am basically like completely addicted to Peloton <laughs> four years later. Well, I think it's um, fascinating yeah. Because we hear, have heard so many stories over the years where people are motivated by weight loss. And I find it fascinating that you were more motivated by weight gain or muscle gain that it, that mm -hmm. it you know, that it wasn't that you recognized that you needed to build your strength. Was there like a specific moment that you realized that like this is something I need to address? Yeah, I um, I remember getting on the scale um, and I was constantly tired, right? Mm -hmm. Like constantly weak, constantly tired, feeling run down. And I get on the scale and I was 94 pounds, which is scary, really, really scary. And again, it wasn't like I wasn't eating or anything like that right. um, or like purposely like naughty, or, but it was just because of my anxiety. Um, I didn't have much of an appetite. So it would like, I would just have to force things down and I just, it was really unhealthy. Right. So I lost so much weight and I'm like, this is not okay. It's just not. And so it's funny because people usually think like, oh, you work out to lose weight, but actually like it really helped open up my app. Like, first of all, help alleviate the stress and the anxiety that right. I was feeling during that time helped open up the appetite like that way too, as well as just working out. So I felt better physically. I was able to eat more um, and I was eating healthy, right? So it was like, I actually now am at 117 pounds. Like I feel so much better. So it's actually, yeah, it, for me, it was about putting on that weight in a healthy way. Um, I, I just remember seeing that number and being like, no well like that's this is it's yeah not okay that's great that you recognize that and were able to address it like yeah. you know especially if anxiety is an issue i mean luckily uh the pandemic was famous for <laughs> soothing anxiety so <laughs> you had that going for you <laughs> i know i mean for me it was i couldn't blame the pandemic for the anxiety because i was but for me it was just a, a lot of life changes going right. on that putting me but then the pandemic came along, which, you know, <laughs> obviously didn't really help things, um, I think, for a lot of people. But in a way, the pandemic did help me because I spent a lot of time working on myself and working out and getting back into like a strong place. And even though it was weird because we were kind of all locked up <laughs> most of the time, the community 
the and like the friends that I met virtually because of the bike like really made getting through that time like it, it just made such a difference like getting through getting through the pandemic like I don't know so I'm actually kind of in a twisted way grateful for it I, I wouldn't want to live through it again <laughs> yeah. uh, but I actually came out of it healthier and with like a group of really great friends and a community oh. so I love you know? that. I love that. I uh, I feel like that is kind of Peloton's superpower. It's not it's not just the instructors or just the classes that you take. It's it's also the people and how they lift you up and they're there for you and they keep you going on days where you you, you uh, might not feel like it otherwise. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, it's an amazing community of people. Uh, and the instructors too. So it's just all of it really, really works for me. And then, you know, people always ask me, like, you work for them? Cause you're always <laughs> talking about them. I'm like, no, I'm like, but when something has such a positive influence on your life, like your health and just also your emotional well being by means of like this community, like, yeah, you're going to talk about it and you're going to tell other people about it, you know, because anything that's such a positive influence in your life I, it's worth talking about <laughs> so absolutely for sure so did um with your diet did you follow any specific dietary changes or eating plans or did you just make a an effort to eat a little bit more and you had increased hunger because of the workouts it was mostly the second one i was raised on like the mediterranean diet which is a pretty healthy and good diet <laughs> to be on so for me it was a matter of supplementing like i got like extra I do I would do protein shakes as snack not as meal replacements but as meal supplements and then I was just like trying to make sure that I was eating enough each meal and it was a lot easier to do that when you know my body wasn't feeling all tightly wound up and anxious and um yeah and after working out like that'll that'll open up your appetite and especially after you do like a pelafondo <laughs> which, <laughs> my first one of those over the pandemic and then i remember going to my mom's and and it was funny because you know you're like sitting like six feet away you know like <laughs> and <laughs> would be like pushing all this food across the table and i was just like eating it eating it, eating it she goes what is going on with you i'm like <laughs> I cycled 101 miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And just and they were just staring at me like, what is happening? And then anyone that was that knew me before the pandemic afterward was like, Are you the same person? Like, because I was just all about working out and all the anyway, so it's funny. But yeah, no, the diet didn't really change, it just was enhanced. Yeah, you just went, you just focused on eating more of the good things. Right. Yeah. So, so. when you say people um, are kind of like, are you even the same person? Do you, do you, enough time has passed now. So you, you may have had like an evolution of feelings about this, but do you kind of feel like you have changed as a person? Or do you think that like all of those elements are still there? They're just like, now you have more self-esteem, more confidence, more, you know, excitement about things than than you did before yeah i mean i think in many ways i'm still the same nerdy person that i've always kind of been that's never changing i just think i have a lot more energy in general um and i do i just feel more comfortable in my own skin because that's i just feel better just i just i don't feel i don't feel weak yeah um there's just and I have again, it's that energy. And I, I went from being somebody who just net was just exercise averse, you know, like, oh, yeah, you guys can go on your run. <laughs> like, I'm, I'll see you after. Like, you guys can go to the gym. Um, I'm going to sit here and watch TV. Right. Like, I just never. And now I'm like, oh, I got to get my workout in. And so folks who knew me before are like, <laughs> who are you, you? Know, like you we couldn't get you to do anything and now you're like uh i gotta do my workout um and i'm so happy about that change like i yeah i i definitely think it's been all positive changes but it hasn't changed me fundamentally as a person in most ways i'm just still the same goofy human that i've always been <laughs> so. it's just now you do this yeah 
now I do this. So um, I I know that you mentioned that you had been to the studio a couple times. Uh, tell us about the first time you went, what that was like, what you loved, what you were not sure about. How did it go? Love, love, love visiting the studios. The first time I went to uh, the New York studio was in the fall of 22. And so it was before they did like the different, like the red card, white card, black card thing. Like there was none of that going on yet. And even the booking was totally different. Um, And it wasn't on a Thursday. And I remember (laughs) I had a friend who he always knew when they were going to be releasing classes. So he messaged me and was like, oh, go book. You know, let's see if we can book for the fall. And so I booked two classes. uh, What was with Allie and Emma. Uh And I ended up timing it, you know, so I was able to do my 1500th ride um, in the studio. And I remember I flew in. It, the first one was Friday morning and I flew in on a Thursday night. I'm on the West Coast. Oh, wow. and I don't really ride very well in the mornings. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do a 7 a.m. New York time ride after flying in on Thursday night. But let's see how this goes. And it didn't matter because once you get there, you're just the adrenaline just so moment. And it just you don't even like um the adrenaline and it's all great but so i just i remember going in and everybody was super nice meeting other people like just in the in the locker rooms and stuff like oh and exchanging leaderboard names of people in the line but because it wasn't like the card system i remember we had to like rush and like kind of (laughs) stand in front of the studio like super early and then it was like you had to have your friend hold your place in line so you go to the bathroom for the class (laughs) um all of that but it was it was a really wonderful experience both so it, um new york i've been twice i actually was just there recently um and i was able to do a class with robin which meant a lot to me because my daughter was diagnosed with diabetes a couple years ago. Oh, wow. And that was something we didn't, I didn't know anything about diabetes beyond, oh, it's an issue with insulin and sugar levels. Right. That's all, you know. Um, And suddenly it became this huge part of our lives. And so seeing her and having her as this example of like, you know, that doesn't stop her at all. So it was really great to be able to do a class with her in the studio and be able to thank her for being that sort of role model um, and um, advocate for, you know, di- and because my daughter too, she'll like, she's 13, she'll like jump on the bike and she'll do a ride with Robin. Um, it's really cute. So anyway, the studio experience has always been great. Um, London was my favorite though. And um, why was it your favorite? Well, partly because Sam Yo is my favorite. So, um, <laughs> he's so um, nice. He's like the nicest. <laughs> he's the best. I love Sam. Um, I love his 80s music. I love that he's a Star Wars nerd because I'm a big Star Wars nerd <laughs> and Top Gun and all these things. Um, like- and I took a lot of his rides in 2020. <laughs> um because and it just he's very zen and i just i love that like his whole vibe just i'm all about it all about sam (laughs) so i um i remember i like randomly decided let me see if i can like book a london studio class and then if if i actually book one with him then i'll see if i can make it happen later (laughs) and (laughs) and so i end up booking it i'm like let me just see so i end up like getting into a class and then i waited to see like what kind of a class it was so i I, first i was on the wait list then i made it into the class and then i found out it was an 80s ride i'm like (laughs) gotta go gotta gotta go go. now gotta go i don't know what i have to do so and because it was march i was able to find like a really good deal on a flight and i was like listen fam like I'm just going to go to London for like 48 hours. Do a Peloton class be right that. back. I'll be right back. <laughs> and they were like, I'm like, it's Sam. It's an 80s ride. And my husband was like, OK, he knows what that means. And he's like, you know, and he also knows that like, oh, this is like something that's that's changed your life. You've been doing this every day for years. Like, if you want to go do a class with Sam, go to a class with Sam. So that's what I did. And it was. um 
and it was like for my 1800th ride. And I, you know, had reached out, you know, to the studio and before, and I was like, oh, you know, it's my 1800th ride. I'm coming from California. And they were, uh, you know, is there any way to get like a front bike? And of course there isn't, right? They were like, no, like we can't do that. But, but what they did do was after, when I, when I was there after the ride, like, um, one of the employees came out and gave me this card and it was like a card, like congratulations on your milestone, this and that. And it was like signed by Sam, Aww. which was super sweet. Um, and then we, you know, we did like the class, obviously the class was amazing and the photos after and Sam actually sat and like hung out for like 20, 30 minutes after the class sat, chatted with us, such a, such a great, like, such a great experience. Like I can't even, couldn't even tell you. Um, and then, you know, I left like the next day. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, they were very welcoming and very, just the whole experience was amazing. Well, I will say um, this. If Sam Yo ever gives you theater recommendations, follow them. Take that. Take yeah. that. Take his advice. Like, because when we were there, he recommended that we go see Guys and Dolls. And and uh, and I was just like, why would I fly all the way to London to see Guys and Dolls? Right. <laughs> like it's a 60 year old musical. It's kind of the quintessential American musical. And we're in London. That sounds dumb. And he was like. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm just going to ask you to trust me. And he's like, and get floor seats if you can. And I'm like, okay. And it was. It was life changing. A blast. <laughs> I've never had that much fun at a, and I love theater. So like it's, but like, I've never had that much fun at a theatrical production in my life. It was like you stood on the floor. They performed right in front of you on risers that like lifted up and down out of the ground and then they would move you back and forth on the floor so the riser didn't you weren't on the riser too because you never knew where they were going to pop up from it was just it was like they had merged a play with a rock concert it was crazy and awesome. I, yeah and we were just stunned. blown away yes blown away so so fun yeah it was great so well, the theater is great <laughs> i um like, cause I stayed, uh, close to the studio next to the, at that time they had like the back to the future show. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I didn't, I didn't realize that that was even a thing until <laughs> I got there and I'm like, Oh, there's a theater right next to my hotel and it's back to the future. So <laughs> I ended up and it was a great show, but yeah, I just, Oh, that's, if I ever go back, which I would love to go back for my 3000th ride, that's kind of my goal to like, go back to PSL for a Sam ride for 3000. I'll definitely ask him like, okay, what do I go see? Yeah. And yeah. if they're still doing guys and dolls, it would have been fun to watch do him perform. One. I know. I would have been. Oh, yeah. I wish we could have, that would have been amazing. Yeah. So that would have uh, been cool. So what is your leaderboard name? So my leaderboard name is unicorn Steph. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and it, you know, I just growing up, I it was just my thing like, oh, I love unicorns. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of big nerd. And so it was just, oh, I'm this magical, sparkly creature, <laughs> unicorn stuff. <laughs> and I just threw it in there. And then because it's a pretty like easy leaderboard name, I just I never changed it. So unicorn stuff forever. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. For sure. So uh, do you have any advice for people just entering the world of Peloton? Advice? I would say um, welcome. You're going to love it. Which is really <laughs> a, um, I would tell them to try different, all the different instructors because there's so many different vibes, different styles. Explore the app because again, there's again, so many different classes, categories within the categories, you know? Um, so you'll find something most likely anyway, that is for you. And having, if you really want to be part of the community, I mean, I, I'm not on Facebook anymore. I know like Facebook there, I'm sure people are still like <clears throat> in the different groups, Peloton groups on there as well, but Instagram definitely has a huge Peloton community. So meeting people that way and getting to know them, I, I would say, hey, you know, make a fitness profile if you don't want to drive your your friends crazy on your personal one and reach out and, and get to know people and do group rides. And there's just so many different like 
community aspects of Peloton too to explore. Um, and I think that's the best part. The members really are like the best part. Some of my best friends now that I have in my life are like that I met through Peloton. So God, I would just tell them you made a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Before we let you go, I'll let everybody know where they can find you in all the places if you would like to be found. Oh, um, well, on Instagram, I am Steph58 underscore fitness. So, yeah, add me so we can be Peloton friends. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you again so much. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I love this. Thanks for having me. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can also find me on other socials and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And people can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at Facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there. Like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our Patreon at Patreon.com slash the clip out so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep pedaling and running and rowing bye, bye. bye. <laughs> Got to pee.